you look at the southern part of the earth, you will see only white in it. Or if you look at a football-sized globe on the ground, you will see a dent on its south pole that is, on the lower part, equal to the size of a tennis ball. This white is actually the world's fifth largest and the world's largest snowy desert, Antarctica. When and how did this part of our earth come into existence? Is this continent under the control of America or any other country? What is its geopolitical or geographical importance? Was this area always such a snowy place, and will its snow ever melt, or will it always be like this? We know all this in this video. This part of the earth was not always like this. Millions of years ago, this part of the earth was part of the supercontinent, Gondwana, which included the present-day Great Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, and South America. About 250 million years ago, this part of the earth separated like the rest of Gondwana, and the present-day Great Antarctica came into existence. Great Australia, South America, Africa, and between the Indian Ocean and the Coastal Ocean, this continent is about 140 million square kilometers. About 98% of it is covered with snow. The average thickness of this layer of snow is about 2 kilometers. The average annual temperature in this area is about minus 50 degrees centigrade. In 1983, the lowest temperature here was recorded at minus 89 degrees centigrade. The average annual rainfall here is 10 centimeters. About 90% of the total snow on our planet and about 70% of the total clean water exists in this continent. Extreme conditions and being distant, this area remained far from human reach for centuries. But in the early 19th century, different countries started their claims in different parts of Antarctica. First of all, the discovery of this continent continued presence in this area were some of the arguments on the basis of which different countries considered their claim on it. First of all, in 1909, the British claimed their ownership of various parts of Antarctica. By the middle of the 20th century, the number of countries claiming their ownership in various parts of Antarctica increased to seven, including Argentina, Australia, Chile, France, New Zealand, Norway, and Britain. During the Second World War, many countries were claiming their ownership in Antarctica, in which America and Germany were leading ones. In December 1938, Germany launched a mission to Antarctica, whose purpose was to find a place in Antarctica where the Germans could not only claim their ownership of Antarctica, but also a station for obtaining whale oil. Whale oil was one of the most important raw materials at that time. After a while, the Germans left Antarctica after completing their temporary camps. America's eyes were on Antarctica from the middle of the 19th century. American missions were coming to this continent. From then, after the victory of the United States, the struggle to control Antarctica became more and more intense. After the defeat of Germany, it was apparent that it was out of control, and Britain had also lost its superpower. In 1958, 12 scientists from 12 different countries set out to research this remote continent together, forgetting all political disagreements. During this research, they not only understood the importance of Antarctica for Earth, but also emphasized joint governance with the cooperation of different countries. Next year, on December 1, 1959, these same 12 countries met in Washington and signed an agreement, which is called the Antarctic Treaty. The basic purpose of this agreement was to specialize Antarctica for scientific research and to ban all kinds of military activities apart from establishing peace here. Every country was given permission to establish scientific research here, and all claims of ownership of different countries were also denied. So our question is whose ownership of Antarctica? The answer is that no country is its sole owner. But the same 12 initial countries who signed the Antarctic Treaty have now become 54 countries. All of them have joint control over this region. These 54 countries have two more groups, i.e. consultative groups, which are 29, and non-consultative groups, which are 25. Countries included in the consultative groups have the right to conduct proper research and make different decisions, while non-consultative groups do not have these rights. Pakistan was the first country in the Islamic world to send its mission to Antarctica. From 1991 to 1993, 
Pakistan had already established two scientific stations in this region, Jinnah Antarctic Station 1 and 2, and the station, which is known as the Iqbal Observatory. On June 15, 1992, Pakistan also became an associate member of the Scientific Committee on Antarctic Research. But Pakistan has not yet become a full member of this committee. This continent does not have permanent population but scientists from different countries who live here, whose number 5,000 in summers and reduced to 1,000 in winters. In addition, Antarctica does not have its own time zone, but the people who go there set time according to their own countries. This area is not only rich in natural resources, but according to the research so far, it is also home to 60 different species of birds and animals, including penguins and whale seal. This area of Antarctica also has more than 400 subglacial lakes. When the name of Antarctica is taken the thought of penguins comes to mind, just like penguins and Antarctica are obligatory. Out of the 17 different species of penguins found in the world, in which 8 live in Antarctica, penguins are birds, but they can't fly. The most prominent generation is that of emperor penguins. The female emperor penguin lays only one egg, which she gives to the male penguin for incubation and goes out to get food. The male penguin remains on the egg without eating or drinking for about 65 days, and loses about 45% of its weight. When the female penguin returns, the male penguin set out for to get food. Trees are not found, although two different types of flowering plants are present here. Scientists have found fossils of trees in a part of Alexander Island during research. Research on these fossils has shown that these trees were present here millions of years ago, which were about 7 meters long. In 2011, scientists discovered an egg the size of a football in Antarctica, which was speculated to be an animal called Mosasaurus. Research on the fossils of this egg has shown that it is the largest egg. Scientists compared the characteristics of this egg with 259 different types of reptile eggs and concluded that it could be an animal with a length of 23 feet or 7 meters. The result was that this egg could possibly be of Mosasaurus, which lived in this area about 66 million years ago. Mosasaurus used to weigh 14,000 kilograms. The discovery of fossils of trees and eggs of Mosasaurus are two such evidence that we know that Antarctica was not always like this. Rather, life existed here millions of years ago. Due to increasing global warming, the snow in Antarctica is melting every year by about 0.2 inches. According to experts, if global warming is not controlled, the sea level can rise to a dangerous level. All the snow in Antarctica melts, the sea level can rise to 230 feet, maybe millions of years later, all the snow in Antarctica melts and life is born here again. Maybe.